Sunday was Fan Appreciation Day at 35th and Shields, and the Chicago White Sox kept it on brand as they lost to the Detroit Tigers 4-1. to The White Sox followed up getting swept by the Cleveland Guardians by getting swept by the last place Detroit Tigers. Uh, there have been some new developments regarding Tony La Russa and Bob Nightingale's latest article throw salt into a fresh, deep wound. The White Sox have an off day on Monday before trying to avoid falling to third place in the AL Central. You are locked on White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome to Locked On White Sox. Thank you for making Locked On White Sox your first listen. Each and every day, we're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Sox. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, just search Locked On White Sox. Hey, I'm your host, Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan, recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTV. Really appreciate you letting me steal some of your time to talk White Sox, especially after this past weekend. Locked On White Sox is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, Miguel Cairo is not holding back with his words, but do the players even care anymore? Uh, could Bruce Bochy really be the next manager of the Chicago White Sox? And during the last weekend home series, the Sox did what the Sox have done for most of the year, disappointed us. State of the White Sox, they are 76 and 77, one game under 500 as we head into the last week of September. Uh, the Cleveland Guardians have clinched the AL Central, and there are nine games left in the season. How would the White Sox follow up after their pathetic effort against the Cleveland Guardians? It was a horrible weekend of baseball. Paid attendance, however, was over 100,000 uh, during the three-game series against Detroit, and fans were treated to some apathetic baseball. Uh, fans showed up, but the White Sox definitely did not. Uh, you could argue it was one of the worst baseball uh, of the season, but there's a lot of competition, unfortunately, for that distinction. Uh, and just for some perspective, it was the first winless homestand of at least six games since 1989. Boy, um, just a few days ago, uh, September 23rd, we had a bit of an anniversary. Uh, it was on that date last year in 2021 where our White Sox clinched the AL Central, won the division by double digits last year. It was their first uh, division championship since 2008. Uh, I went over to the uh, Chicago Sports Depot uh, that afternoon after they clinched and, and got the, uh, the AL Central hat and the T-shirt pennant. Uh, I wasn't the only one. That place was, uh, that place was hopping. Fast forward a year later, and depending on how things go, the White Sox could finish in third place in the AL Central in 2022. Just uh, remarkable. Uh, two weeks ago at this time, uh, the White Sox were on fire. Uh, they won three of four in Oakland, which is a tough thing to do. Five and two on a difficult West Coast trip. Miguel Cairo had the magic touch. Things were different. What happened. Cleveland absolutely broke them. That game on Tuesday in extra innings, uh, and it sure looked like the Sox have quit on themselves, each other, uh, and of course the fans. Uh, despite all of this, uh, Elvis Andrews, who 
uh, has been a bit of a spark plug for the White Sox since coming over from Oakland. Uh, he was on the score 670 this past weekend. And he said that he'd like to return to the White Sox in 2023 and is willing to change positions if necessary. Uh, we still don't have word on what's going to happen with Tim Anderson. Is he actually going to come back uh, and play some baseball this season? Uh, and if that is the case, it sounds like he'll go right to shortstop, and then we might see what Elvis Andrews can do at second base. It will be a small a sample size. Andrews is a free agent, of course, after this season. Uh, so who knows? Uh, I like his bat. I like what he brings to the ball club. Uh, moving over to second, bla second base, is that really the answer? Uh, there's a lot of questions uh, in this offseason. Uh, speaking of this offseason uh, and things that I'm sure we'll be wrestling with, uh, the Tony La Russa decision for sure, but there is a bit of a clar there's some clarity for this season. Uh, after undergoing additional testing and medical procedures over the past week, Doctors for Tony La Russa have directed him to not return as manager of the Chicago White Sox for the remainder of the 2022 season. And that is what the White Sox said in a statement. Uh, so we've got some answers finally. Uh, now it becomes what's going to happen in 2023. He still has one more year on his contract. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later in this episode. Uh, Luis Robert was also shut down uh, officially. You won't see him uh, anymore this season. Why now? Why did it take so long? Uh, we all saw what, what he was doing with a baseball bat, literally swinging uh, with one hand. I know he wanted to play. He wanted to gut it out and provide whatever he could. We saw him as a defensive replacement, as a pinch runner, but offensively, absolutely nothing. It was a black hole in the lineup. Uh, they let him continue to play, maybe doing further damage uh, to the wrist. I don't know. Uh, but just now, this past weekend, they thought it would be best to finally shut him down. Uh, and Jake Diekman, uh, what are you doing? Um, we are stuck with Jake Diekman for another season. Uh, he was the lone uh, trade deadline acquisition, of course, left-hander that should uh, cancel out lefty bats. Uh, he has been a real head case. Uh, he was in the Cleveland series and uh, was at it once again this past weekend. Uh, there's no way uh, that you're going to let the last place Tigers come into your home and take all three games. Uh, but I'm going to tell you that is uh, exactly uh, what happened. Uh, more on that in a moment. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. Uh, you want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job, then add your job in the purple hashtag Hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to hire and, and interview. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the, the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown MLB. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Let's take you back to Friday. I know you don't want to, but I will. Uh, anyway, it was the start of a very bad series. White Sox lost to the Tigers 5-3. to three. Lucas Giolito was on the hill Friday night. Uh, he went six innings, six hits, three earned runs, a walk, nine strikeouts, uh, gave up a home run, and his ERA is at 5.05. He threw 90 pitches. Uh, he gave up two runs in the first inning, which just feels like the Giolito way uh, these days. And, you know, he, he gets that out of his system, and then he does settle down. 
uh, gave up three runs in total in the first two innings. He just, and when he gives up the runs, he just looks lost. You know, he, he doesn't have the command. It's middle, middle stuff that he's uh, getting beat on. Uh, he, he's not in a groove with some of his, uh, definitely with his changeup. He gets stronger as the game goes on, usually. Not always the case. Uh, this year has been really disappointing. Uh, Giolito has talked about it in several articles. I have no idea what to make about this guy moving forward. Um, you know, he battled on Friday. He got better as the game went on. But, you know, putting your team in an early hole, not ideal. I mean, he's really just a mediocre uh, starting pitcher right now. And I know he's got a lot of work that he wants to put in this offseason to recorrect whatever happened to him at the beginning of this season with all the weight gain and the muscle and uh, I, I don't really have a lot of faith with uh, what he's going to deliver moving forward. I mean, he, he's a number four, you know, I, I don't know, again, what kind of offseason the Sox are going to have uh, pitching wise, but uh, he, he's been a disappointment. Sox offense, also a disappointment. Three runs, eight hits, two extra base hits. Uh, A.J. Pollock with a home run. Sacks were one for six with runners in scoring position. They left nine guys on base. Now, attendance on Friday, 33,000. They had that drone show uh, after the game uh, in spite of the fireworks. Saturday, um, pretty ugly. Once again, Sacks lost to the Tigers 7-2. to two. Uh, Davis Martin was on the hill. Uh, he had very close numbers to Giolito, six innings, Seven hits, three earned runs, a walk, four strikeouts, a home run. Uh, however, his ERA sits at 3.86. He threw 93 pitches. Uh, again, allowed two runs early in the game, first inning to be specific. Um, you know, it, it just this is where the idea of like a bullpen comes in is when an offense can get to you early, you know, numbers tend to show that a team that scores first will win. Uh, the game. So if you put your locked, uh, you know, your locked in bullpen, get them going. Uh, you can limit runs early. Maybe that gives you a chance. Uh, I, I get the theory behind it. Uh, again, Davis Martin uh, didn't pitch too bad, but I say that. However, his numbers were very similar uh, to Giolito. You just kind of felt better with what Davis Martin gave you because I don't have a lot of expectations for Davis Martin. My expectations kind of were still so high for Giolito. I mean, he was your opening day uh, starter. I don't know what's going to happen again next season, but uh, Giolito definitely has got some work to do. Uh, Sacks offense on Saturday, oof, two runs, five hits, back-to-back uh, -back home runs from Jimenez and Sheets, uh, but with runners in scoring position, 0 for 4. Uh, attendance on Saturday, uh, 36,000. Uh, that was the uh, windbreaker uh, giveaway. Now, Jake Diekman, he, he was really the problem on Saturday. Boy, uh, he did not record an out in the seventh inning. I gave up four runs on five hits, including a three-run home run by Javi Baez. And boy, did Baez love that. He got booed all weekend long, as he usually does uh, when he comes on in uh, to Saks Park. Uh, Diekman's ERA, 5.13. Uh, the lone trade deadline acquisition. Uh, we're stuck with him for 2023. Uh, this is what they said. Giolito, after Friday's loss, and how surprising it is that the White Sox are this far out of the playoff race. Uh, this is what Giolito said, quote, I wouldn't say it's surprising or shocking. Uh, we've had a whole season of not putting things together. And, and Lance Lynn has something has said something similar to that effect too, especially when the Sox were playing Cleveland. They, they were only back uh, six games at that point. I say only, but still, it was six games. And Lynn's kind of said, well, that's how it's been going. We played like garbage. Uh, so the follow-up question that I would have is, well, why has it been a full season of not putting things together? And, and maybe that's a question for the offseason. Uh, maybe that's a question that no one will fully answer. Uh, maybe the realities are so troubling, uh, it's tough to actually address all the problems. They don't want to. 
because that would require maybe a complete teardown. Uh, Rick Hahn was talking uh, to the media this past weekend, talking about Tony La Russa and the White Sox. This is what uh, Hahn had to say uh, regarding La Russa. Quote, I did speak to him Saturday morning, and he had no issue with us letting everybody know that there is a treatment protocol in place that he plans on adhering to. As for the inevitable question, well, does that mean uh, I'm sorry. Well, what does that mean for next season? Uh, we are going to finish up this season first and then address everything when it's appropriate to turn the page at the end of this year. And quote, uh, Han went further uh, regarding the White Sox as a team. Uh, quote, Miguel Cairo and the coaches have done a very fine job. Uh, we've seen at various stretches, unfortunately, not the last four days, all four losses, but for extended stretches over the last few weeks, this team showing flashes of playing at the level we thought was capable over the course of the entire season. It's a little too late over the course of the year, but I think those guys deserve a lot of credit for what was thrust upon them on the fly and the way they responded. Uh, both in the coaches' room and in the clubhouse. I feel that in many ways, they haven't missed a beat, which they deserve a lot of credit for. The focus has been on the games and the series right in front of them, as opposed to any uncertainty. At the same time, Tony is in their thoughts, and there has been communication with Tony and well wishes passed along. In no way do I feel the club has been distracted despite the circumstances. Very professional response, end quote. Wow. I mean, there is so much to pick apart in that quote alone. We really don't have enough time in this episode. Uh, Han gives a lot of credit to the team for responding to what was thrust upon them. However, does not feel the club has been distracted by the circumstances. Uh, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, definitely Han speak. Uh, there are, there needs to be some accountability. Uh, there absolutely has to be not, not just for this homestand, but for this entire season and beyond. Uh, Han has got a lot of questions to answer if he will even be asked them and if he will fully answer them uh, when the time comes. Uh, Bob Nightingale's latest article alludes to a White Sox front office torn regarding which direction to go. Surprise, surprise. I'm going to tell you why we may be further from a World Series now than we were back in 2016. More on that in a moment. Always interesting when we get a new article from Bob Nightingale of USA Today. Uh, this is what uh, he uh, had to say this past weekend. Uh, this is from his latest. On the south side, the White Sox have to determine whether their window of opportunity has already closed. Do they continue to go for it with their same group or blow up the team? They almost must decide whether or not to bring back manager Tony La Russa, who's out the rest of the year after undergoing a procedure for his pacemaker. La Russa has one year and four million left on his deal. Uh, but there's a deep divide in the organization whether they should bring him back, boot him upstairs, give the manager's job to intern Miguel Cairo, or look outside the organization and target someone like three-time World Series champion Bruce Bochy. Wow. Again, what, what do you make of that? So much to break apart. Uh, sometimes when you have multiple paths or multiple voices fighting to be heard, uh, you really have none. Uh, but just when you thought it couldn't get worse, the Sox still had a game to play on Sunday afternoon. And ouch, it got absolutely ugly. Uh, Sox lost to the Tigers 4-1 to one on Fan Appreciation Day. The Sox definitely kept it on brand there. Uh, it was an embarrassing effort. Uh, this was before the game, uh, Miguel Cairo. Uh, there are 10 more games, and you have to challenge yourself to go out there and do your job and perform. Try to win, not try. You want to win. I don't like trying. There's no trying in baseball. You do it or you don't do it, uh, end quote. Hmm. Uh, big uh, article 
uh, in the Chicago Tribune, Sunday edition, uh, front uh, headline, Let's Finish Strong. Sacks did not do that, especially this homestand. Um, it was a sad, uh, just really apathetic, you know, lethargic. It just sacks players are just going through the motions. Uh, and, and, you know, it's after that, I, it almost just felt like after that Tuesday game against Cleveland, they knew the battle that they had, the uphill climb, and uh, they've been just going through the motions. Uh, Yohan Mankata, he flashed some leather in Sunday's game, not only the fifth, but also the sixth challenging plays. Uh, he also hit a solo home run. It was the only run of the game, uh, but could not make a play on an infield ground ball in the eighth, which, uh, you know, setting up for an opportunity for Detroit to get their second run. He will continue to be a polarizing figure. I mean, you can ask, I, I feel like you can ask 10 people what their thoughts on Mankata, and you will get different responses in a variety of different ways. You know, he's lazy. He doesn't hustle to first. He's always in pain. He's often injured. Or, he, you know, who else would you want defensively at third? He has so much potential with the bat. We're starting to see glimpses. You know, because he's injured, he hasn't lived up to his, you know, his offensive production. Uh, you can make, art, art, you know, arguments a bunch of different ways. What I do know is he's going to be around in 2023. I don't see the Sox uh, trying to get rid of him or his contract. Uh, we owe him a lot of money. Uh, he can play a third base. Does he have lapses? He sure does. Uh, does it look like he just doesn't care and does not hustle? It sure does. But then he does stuff like on Sunday, provide your only run and throw some leather. And you're like, you know, I wish we had this guy more often. Uh, a guy that nobody's complaining about, Dylan Cease, he was on the hill on Sunday. He did everything he possibly could. Six innings, four hits, zero earned runs, three walks, five strikeouts. His ERA, 2.06. 95 pitches. We could not give him any real offense whatsoever. He got out of jams in the fifth and a bases loaded jam in the sixth with nobody out. Thanks to Mankata and Sebi. Uh, Kendall Graveman uh, imploded for the bullpen. It was Deekman on Saturday, Graveman on Sunday. He imploded in the eighth. The lone free agent signing before the lockout. Uh, Sacks offense, one run, six hits. One extra base hit, solo home run, of course, from Yohan Mankata. Sacks were 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. This was Miguel Cairo after Sunday's loss. Today was the worst. It was kind of embarrassing. I would, uh, with all due respect, remove the word kind and just, it was flat out embarrassing. Folks, thank you so much for making this podcast part of your daily routine. You can find the Lockdown White Sox podcast absolutely everywhere you find your podcasts. We are on Twitter and Instagram at Lockdown Sox. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTV. Uh, thanks for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen. Now make your second listen, the Lockdown MLB podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked on MLB on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, coming up on the next episode, Sox have an off day, but I'll get you ready for that Minnesota Twins series. Really appreciate you making time for the Lockdown White Sox podcast. I'm Nick Murawski. Until next time, go Sox.